We're delighted to have you all back for this show, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, the 335th time you have watched us or you will now watch us because we get you so excited about it. So we are at different parts of the world now. Uh, me, Martin Despang, back in Germany, uh, 11 p.m. And everyone else is back in beautiful Hawaii. We have Martin Anzalini, who is uh, joining us from Colombia, um, the uh, country of. Um, and uh, so, hi, Martin. Hello. We have Yudis Soto Brown back from your Asipov Design home. <laughs> yes, that's Soto. true. Good, good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever it is, whatever it is, wherever you are. <laughs> And in this new format here, uh, our founder, Jay Fidel, is not just with us uh, overall, but also producing this and uh, always chipping in. Hi, Jay, and thanks for all of that. So uh, what we're doing, as we promised uh, last time, that uh, different than Civil Beat, who shame on them, told Kurt Sandburn, uh, that he is not qualified to report about things in Hawaii because he's not permanently there. We actually think it's the opposite. The more we send us away, the more we see things that maybe we can learn from other places or also we cannot learn. So for that matter, we already did that uh, several times. As you see here on uh, that flight um, uh, screen here where all these flights are going, we did way back to Germany. Uh, well, we do do it in Germany a lot, but we did to another part of Germany, not the southern part where I'm right now, but to the very northern part, to Hamburg. Uh, we compared the harbor city to Kakaako. And then this gets you very excited, uh, Jay, and uh, in, in continuing to be because we send us to Portugal to the island of Madeira, which has a lot to do with Hawaii, because all these folks who brought the ukulele and the sweetbread and all these goodies came from there. And then we also send me to Porto. And as promised, uh, based on your request, Jay, we will send me next to the southern part of Portugal in a couple of weeks to the um, uh, down there um, and so to the coast. So. That being said, but today we're going what you see the flight, all these flights you see here, the second from the lowest, this is where we're going to go now. And this is Barcelona, the Spanish city of Barcelona. And before we go there, um, we want to make sure how we want to look at things. And this is not uh, formally, at least not for the sake of form, but performatively based on human thermal comfort. And that's why we have down there below uh, me or behind me from Wikipedia, the climate data. It's not unsimilar to us in Hawaii. That's why it's exciting, uh, at least not in the summer. In the wintertime, it is more chilly, but it does not get down to the freezing point where never mind that you guys come from the more uh tropical areas but we have all been in this chilly freezing one way or another martin you've been in switzerland for a while uh, poor de soto you had to go to boarding school in boston and jay you come from the cold anyways before you came to the always warm some so many years ago so that is the the the, the framing the framework how we want to look at at things. And uh, Martin, we're especially delighted to have you with us because we should actually speak in Spanish from now on, which puts at least uh, myself out of business. Don't know about you, DeSoto and Jay. So we will only have Martin talking because you are by nature a Spanish speaker and you have also uh, experienced the city of Barcelona actually way before some of us. Is that right and fair to say? Tell us when you were there. Claro, claro que sí. <laughs> I was there, yeah, more than 15 years ago, like 17 years ago, living for a fantastic year as a master student. Yeah, and we have footage from that. You were digging out pictures, and yeah. uh, the other pictures are from when we sent me out to so do you remember, it's been three years, and we have to wait until now to air that. All right, so uh, Jay let us know he has been in Barcelona as well. So DeSoto, you just said you have, you're the only one who hasn't. 
That's correct. That's, I unfortunately, have not been to Europe at all. So not well, only Barcelona, but nothing in Europe. Yeah, see, that's why we do this for you. So we take you there this way and everyone that's else right. and get you excited to go or, again, um, teach you the lessons from remote. So mostly people go by airplane, as you can see here, that wing, that is Lufthansa, Star Alliance partner from United Airlines. And everything these days isn't like it used to be, right? That's like in the news and other circumstances that we maybe not want to go that way. But uh, there is actually turbulences, high turbulences increasingly, uh, sorry to uh, climate change. So even flying isn't the way it used to be. And uh, why it's really comparable, it's another, it's a fellow maritime metropolis. It's a big city right at the ocean. And then there is sort of boats at the ocean. There is actually big yachts that we don't even capture here. We want to always not capture the, the outrageous, but the, the meaningful. So there's like a solar panel uh, film, PV panel clad. Um, and we once did a show about our big ships, you know, that we said could be like horizontal high rises down there. So um, one thing, uh, Martin, uh, although you were you were born, but you were like a five year, six year young boy in in 1991 when uh, when uh, Barcelona had the Olympics big yeah. times. Uh, I happen to be bummer going uh, to the U.S., which is not the bummer, but this was the time when I got excited to see the my holy land, the United States, as a student. So um, I was far away, but I remember uh, that um, from the media and the architectural magazines, uh, Barcelona was really the hot spot at, at that time. Mm. And uh, lots of kind of signature architecture um, installations happened as this thing here, which is the engineer architect Santiago Calatrava, who built this tele telecommunication tower uh, that is sort of a, a beacon, uh, maybe not much else maybe uh, that we want to talk about, but just to get that. DeSoto, we had been uh, scratching. I mean, we just with this uh, show quote, we had been reporting that I was there um, when and we said, you know, there's something already better because there is actually there is buses. Yes, the bus goes from uh, the uh, Inui airport to town. But the ironic thing is that you can't take luggage. You can only take that little carry on that you can put under your seat which is a little weird because although we are saying maybe you should dress less when you come to Hawaii, but people don't do it yet, right? So it's kind of a little, little ironic. While this bus here is the aero bus, it's the A1 or A2, depending on which terminal you come in. And then this shuttles you directly into the city and it has a big suitcase rack, which is really a good thing. And then you continue with this bus. So, so this show kicks off with something that is maybe not as relevant as to put this out to begin with. Uh, it leads us to things that might actually be more relevant to us, but it's the most that's in your face. And these are in our three different languages. You pronounce it, Martin, the Torres, right? You, you got to yeah. roll the R. Uh, what yeah. is that for you, DeSoto? Uh, I would just say Taurus, but I wouldn't say it right. Towers, <laughs> towers. The, the oh, towers! Are the, are the towers. And we, of course, got it with the umlaut. We got tulm, which is the U with the dots above yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So then uh, a couple of states. It's, this is kind of a, 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 kind of a, you know, a, a, a bus that goes fast and goes on the, uh, on, the, on the freeway there and has only a few stops. Uh, this is one, this is actually the gateway to which was uh, about a century earlier, or not quite, but in 1929, there was the World Exposition in Barcelona, which we will later, little nationalist chip in my German pavilion, uh, which is a very famous one from Mies van der Rohe. So if you go through these two towers here, as a gate, you end up uh, where the fairgrounds were and, and lots of the architecture from there is actually still there. But maybe the towers we're most excited about, uh, Martin, are these ones. And this is uh, the first picture that you were digging out from 2008, right? 
Yeah. So why did you take that picture and why does this picture resonate you with you as far as urbanity and, and building high and tall? Yeah, M many, many things. First, I mean, as, as you see here, the layers of history that Barcelona have, which is something special. We are here right in the downtown, which is a very uh, vibrant downtown. No, I was living close to this rooftop. This was a friend's place where we were having some drinks. Uh, and uh, the downtown downtown was alive, no, with students, with people, with business people also uh, on the weekend, uh, also in, in working hours, also full of tourists, which is great, no? It's, uh, 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 as you see all in these antennas and all the, all the this kind of, of organicity of, of what we see up there is is great, no? And this is something that we can easily bring to uh, Honolulu's downtown, no? This vibrancy of of of, of the downtown. Plus, uh, this is something that we can uh, talk later when we keep talking about towers. Is the use of the terrace, no? Is how important in Barcelona with that amazing weather, not as amazing as Honolulu's, but uh, we are, we were always using terraces, no? The Lanai is the the most valuable space and uh, in in built environments rooftops could achieve that uh, function and of course time a is a yeah what are the what are the historic towers that i can see are those all churches because i see three what appear to be church spires is that right yeah okay uh, the 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 gothic tower is kind of up bizarre because it it is kind of a neo-gothic it was developed later than the gothic period very beautiful very uh like go gothic monumental full of light and so on uh is a cathedral that is right uh in the barrio gotico which is the the downtown of of, of Barcelona. just in front of that building is the the colegio de arquitectos which is kind of the uh, aia uh, on a very important building for Honolulu, the architects uh, uh, back in Barcelona are like really a voice. Yeah, and and this sort of, of course, per your, uh, you know, um, dedication, reputation of being the historian. Of course, history is a key factor because we should have been throwing in a show quote when you were reporting about when the first tower in Honolulu arrived, was, was built and what that was. And that's actually compared to this here, not that long ago. Here we're talking thousands of years, which is the one and when was that in Honolulu? Just recall that, recalling that? Uh, our first tower was Aloha Tower, which wasn't built until 1926. But of course, we're talking about Europe now where churches, cathedrals, were under construction hundreds and hundreds of years ago to be as monumental and tall as possible based on the technology that they had at that time. So this is something that goes much further back than it does in many other parts of the world. Yeah. However, Aloha Tower, different than the towers of these days, which is actually commercial or residential high rises, as we call them, they, of course, have a top floor, too, Unfortunately, that top floor is uh, the opposite of the rooftops that you're talking about, Martin, which are in one way or the other for the people and publicly or semi-publicly, uh, you know, accessible. There's even restaurants up there. I mean, other cities alike, like Istanbul, the whole nightlife is actually on the rooftops. Um, and so in, in residential or commercial high rises, it's, it's mostly the most ritzy, glitzy people have a penthouse up there. Or there's some private clubs with the, um, I remember, uh, uh, um, um, Kelly Akina was uh, one of the managers in the, in the Plaza Club, which um, is not anymore, is also turned into a high-end, I think, residential office in downtown. So this is the difference here. So we're not going to the towers on the ocean or close to the ocean here. This is a must actually be actually if uh, have to do the research we're not doing all the work for you guys when you watch this you got to do some figuring out by yourself but you can guess this might actually be from the same 30s 
and it's a very appealing short little tower it's part of a, a private kind of a swimming a yacht club there and it's an easy breezy tower that's all porous and actually all it has is a staircase in there so there's one that actually reminds us of back in honolulu these in an unfortunate way as well here uh, this is a very sort of uh, known renowned architect uh, ricardo bofill that we want to uh, um, sort of um, farewell him at the end of this here many uh, slides away in at the beginning of his career where he was um, you know in uh, inspiring many of us in many generations and this is now as everything a personal uh, opinion here that you can just take with a grain of salt but when I was that student in when you were in Barcelona in 2008 and I was uh, coming to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska in, in the 90s, in 1991. My first field trip to Chicago, Rizzotto, we have been reporting about when we were doing 21 shows comparing another coastal metropolis, Chicago, where a lot of architects come from these days. We were uh, addressing this tower, which was very unfortunately going, um, Jay, yeah. and we once did a show about cynical classicism, which has to do with a person that's all over the news uh, these, these hours, uh, which is Trump. And so um, this is a, a very, again, uh, stylistically unfortunate because it's along the lines what he had mandated for federal buildings, a kind of a cynical classicist style. and. Ricardo couldn't help himself to go this way. And maybe even worse, the other one uh, there uh, at, the, at the left part of the, of the slide here, right, right behind me now, is a hotel uh, from 2009 that is just a, a microwave uh, in yeah. the shape of a sail or whatever postmodern um, uh, analogy you want to find. Martin, so, I... Yeah. I Sorry, I, I when I was a student there, there was taking place the master plan and the design of that Bofield building. I was gonna and say, there was so I... much, I mean, everybody admired him there, back there, mainly in Barcelona, his local and so on. But uh, there was a big discussion regarding, uh, regarding a very particular thing, regarding the shadow of the building on the beach. There was this discussion mm -hmm. open. Plus, something which is very important is what this building made to the environment around in terms of public space, because there was a very nice, romantic, old, somehow abandoned port neighborhood. And they did this huge, like, top-down investment on which they completely destroyed part of that uh, uh, fabric that was existing before. No, So th there is mistakes, in my point of view, from the architectural point of view, but also from the urbanistic point of view, no, they they completely dismantled the 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 fabric that was existing there. Of course, I am pro urban renovation, but this renovation should take the good things that are already happening in the environments, no, as yeah, they did in, you... in in Barrio Olimpico. No? Yeah, and you made you made a great point, which which Jay uh, recently we talk a lot about his term of capital concentration. This, as it sounds like, and there's actually the, the lower part to the right of it here um, above me here is actually a shopping center, or a shopping mall. So this was basically driven not by cultural, uh, you know, uh, motivations, but by commercial. And, and that is always sort of an iffy thing, because then it's basically about surface and not substance. It's about selling and not about, you know, the, the kind of the history and the evolution of culture. So, um, it is, and let me also just say, as someone who is just looking at this for the first time, I am a believer in landmark buildings in a urban skyline to add variety, which our skyline in Honolulu does not have. And we've discussed that a lot. However, that building looks more to me in the photo that I just saw as almost offensively eye-catching in an yeah. otherwise undeveloped area. If you put yeah. this amidst other buildings, I would be fine with it. As it is right now in the middle of nothing and everything, if you are forced to look at it, I don't think that's an enhancement of that view. And 
Martine, what you just said is it wasn't an enhancement of its neighborhood either. Yep. Yeah, and I think we, we can, you know, if we trace back to your childhood, DeSoto, uh, mid-century, Googie, you know, statehood heydays, uh, Waikiki also was in its infancy, and you saw a few towers first, and then they got more and more and more. However, this inauguration was an, a progressive one, because the towers from these days were actually performatively... Uh, easy breezy, single loaded corridors, and they basically worked. And that's where they drew their sort of appearance from. Versus here, we're starting to discover that it is pure form based. It's in postmodernism, which happened ever since Ronnie Reagan, and we're not out of it. We're actually more deeply into it. And, and these two, so what you can already see is that. Um, that uh, uh, Barcelona, different than Honolulu, especially Waikiki and downtown and increasingly Kaka'ako, is not heavily uh, basically populated by high rises. This is actually looks here like urbanistically, you guys are right, looks like Waikiki in the 50s with the very first towers basically coming up, like the Waikiki Circle Tower is one of our favorites that was almost by itself there. But if we look at these two towers here, and they are also from that sort of boom area of these early 90s, where the Olympics basically pushed it and seemed to basically have capital concentration. In some ways, towers, guys, since we're guys here only, uh, we have to say capital concentration in sort of an erection way. The towers have often been uh, accused of being the dominance of mostly male financial power. This is where you basically park your money that costs a lot of money and they want to represent that power of money. And again, we're, we're scratching always, uh, you know, have to, but uh, I was just listening to the Bavarian public radio about uh, they had interviewed people in front of the Trump Tower in New York City because of, you know, the assassination attempt of Trump. So there we go again. I mean, this is a symbol of power uh, as it couldn't be more sort of in one's face. So we should keep this in mind that these are not the, the proletarian people power towers or in your picture, Martin, the, the, the one from 2008, when you said people lived there, they were actually also, maybe you couldn't call them quite towers, but tall urban uh, slab buildings that were residential. This is, this is purely park capital. And if we analyze them from left to right, this is when you go on, an, on a boat trip, you know, which you can do in Honolulu as well, like a sunset cruise, and you go along these towers here. This is, it's also a typology that has for the longest time been owned by America, because America is, was the country that, if not invented, but popularized the tall building, the high rise, the skyscraper. And indeed, here at that time in the 90s, they actually asked an American firm, Skidmore Owings Merrill, that we have been blessed with two uh, projects on the island that we see there at the very bottom, which is the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel and the engineering school, Richards Hall on campus. Uh, and they have been built earlier. This here is a later time of Skidmore Owings Merrill with a design partner, Bruce, uh, Bruce Graham who was in charge. So if we, this is a recent picture here when uh, we were just there again uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you can see if you analyze this one here, this building is currently under renovation. And why is it sort of vulnerable to, uh, to maybe having, having to go through that more periodically than, than usually? What's kind of maybe uh, problematic with the, with a tectonic approach of the building, guys. Yeah. Exposed steel? Exactly. It's an yeah. exoskeleton out of steel. What does steel do? It rusts if it's exposed to ocean salt, especially. So while it might be a funky, fancy idea structurally to put the skeleton on the outside, but in the materialization of steel, and behind, it's a pretty ordinary, you know, punched in whole uh, facade fenestration that only gets a sort of fanciness and funkiness. 
There was also a tragic event that towers are also notorious actually happening uh, the day after I took this picture. There was police and fire department because there was a suicide guy who who climbed up the scaffolding there and was threatening to throw himself off the tower, which is also something that tall buildings like the Emperor State, you know, and the Chrysler building that has happened um, quite a lot. And then yeah. we have we have it paired and topped off like icing on the cake with another American piece of star architecture. Which one is that, Martin? You recall that, I'm sure. This is uh, Frank Gehry's, is my favorite, my favorite building of Frank Gehry, which is not a building. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, I agree. he's a very good sculptor. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very good sculpture. We have some very personal angle to Frank as well. If you want to know, watch the show about most human humane architect, Gunther Despang, my dear father. Um, you have a similar constellation with your father being your mentor and your part, uh, you know, business partner as well. And I mm. agree um, because this one here is actually a performative, a climatically performative fish as he was on that trip of the fishes because it gives you shade. You can actually be underneath and be relatively comfortable and it's a non-building. It's basically just something that we always say we should always have, you know, is 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 shade as structure. Yeah. I'm going to say also, too, that I think in this case, this architect works with such peculiar forms that in this case, he just gets to go wild without having to fit any human beings into it. So it can just be sculpture. It is just sculpture without having to put the real world into it, in which case it's even more fun. And this is just there to be fun, to be an adornment, to be decorative in a good way, but also, as you said, too, to provide shade. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, this could come across as sort of imperialist, right? America is coming to a very sort of thousand-year-old city that of course the Sagrada Familia which is a thousand years old but even only 150 years old but still so there's a lot of you know tradition and history but in terms of commercial tower torre turma uh, America comes in so I think the Spanish couldn't couldn't you know leave that uh, and, and had to confront it so we we also did a comparison in with Met Noblet in Banish Boston Booster Volume 22 about beers and their relevance in culture. So here is one of the Spanish beers in front of a tower that's right next to the American one. And this is done by local uh, people, by a local firm uh, who you see here at the very bottom uh, right, uh, their name. And that was built around the same time. This is the Torah Mapfre. Mapfre is an insurance company. So it's again, it's capital concentration. And while the tower doesn't look that funky, uh, doesn't look that compelling as a form, uh, actually performatively, if you look at it closer, the, the glass is angled to avoid reflection and to some degree also overheating. And it is actually lanai. They're very shallow balconies. We couldn't, shouldn't call them lanai's, but there's, there's, there's little catwalks in front of them and guardrails very minimalistically. So for the maintenance of the building, and I guess if you would want, you could probably pull, you know, at times a little coffee table there if there would be an access door, but maybe wind or so doesn't allow that. But we, one would say, I think I allow myself at least to throw into the discussion that actually the local tower makes more sense. Um, performatively speaking, while, of course, formally speaking, the other one, this is the American gesture, a postmodern kind of a fossil formalism, while this here is a tower that 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 is by local people. And for that matter, probably I have to say in, in sort of um, uh, helping out SOM that my favorite tower or my favorite building or project by SOM overall is a tower that is a very very diplomatic tower that is in Jeddah in the desert of the Arab desert and that is from the mid 80s and that is the National uh, Bank of Commerce that is a beautiful bioclimatic homage to local culture and courtyards 
we have actually been cross-referencing to that in many shows and we will continue with this we should probably bring it back to give you guys an idea or you look it up online so som was actually able to do that actually not that many years before because that was mid 80s and this one is early 90s and they very very soon kind of kind of can went down the drain actually they got they hit an even more low point where they actually even joined the uh, the, the neoclassical style and then in recent years they got themselves more out of the ditch <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> anyways we are pretty close to the end yeah. of the show time here so let me just go back as an appetizer to the next image here but then talk about it next time which is another one of yours martin that you were digging out from your 2008 times there and it's yeah. pretty close to where we just were and it's also very interesting because it has to do with us as a university, University of Hawaii, because this is an institutional academic building, but we have to leave it with that for now, only to get you excited about joining us in a week again and see what else we have to learn from Barcelona, because there is a lot, not only the towers. Okay. So looking forward to that.